Hi everyone, James here. Well, um, I know it's been a little while since I made a video. Yeah, a little while is an understatement. But um, I've been wanting to do this for a very long time, and everything you're about to see in this video I've been waiting even longer for. About five years ago I moved with my family to Australia. And about a year ago we moved back, um, and during that time I've bought a lot more Transformers, I've been to TF Nation, and ever since then I've tried to focus more on collecting Transformers and really trying to organise my collection. Not only trying to organise it as best I can, but also collecting smaller subgroups. So, you know, obviously that includes the likes of the Autobots and the Decepticons, because obviously. But then that splits off into smaller collections. So there's my Wreckers, my Lost Light, um, my Combiners, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and the display, or the unit that I'd had for a while, I'd actually had for about eight years, but at this point, um, my room had been organized in a way that really worked for me, but at the same time, um, it was still wasting a lot of space, and I wanted to try and optimize that. So last week, my dad and I went out to Ikea, and I got two really good bookshelves, um, which must have been brand new because they were labeled brand new all over the website, and I don't think they were even in their display um, that long because no sooner were we in the door, I saw them and I immediately knew those were the ones I wanted. So um, I, I've just been amazed with how good these bookshelves have been. Um, so what you're about to see is a time lapse of me getting everything sorted out, um, moved out of the old bookshelf, getting it, or the old unit, getting it moved out, getting the new bookshelves in, and getting my collection set up and sorted out. So I'll just let that run now and let you enjoy it. Okay, and that was the time lapse. And I'll tell you this, the time lapse is very deceiving because even though like it looks like a lot of stuff went on there, it was nowhere near as quick as the time lapse would have um, um, suggested it took. Um, but um, I am just absolutely amazed with how great um, the bookshelves have wound up. So I'm going to stop talking now and I'm actually going to show you what I did with them. Okay, so I'm starting off in the corner here, um, just so you can get a sense of how absolutely enormous these things are. Um, I apologize if the footage shakes a little bit. Um, I'm just experimenting with my new iPhone, so apologies about that. Also, sincere apologies about the mess, but I'm getting that sorted out. So in the meantime, this is my all new display unit. And it is absolutely fantastic. Um, the way that I used to have my displays was um, the Autobots occupied the top three shelves and the Decepticons previously occupied the bottom two. So the Decepticons always felt like they were being relegated to the bottom half of the displays. But um, the fact that these are actually two units side by side makes it even better because now it means that it can perfectly split my collection right down the middle and it feels like, you know, the same number of figures occupy the same number of shelves with minor exceptions. But um, just to give a brief run through of what I have, right along the top is actually where I have a brand new collection that I'm just really proud of at the moment. Um, this is sort of two um, collections in one. Uh, they are my... They are my um, 
my 13 primes collection. So that has been started off with Vector Prime and the Energon Star Saber, which um, I hope to give to one of my other figures once I figure out what I'm going to get for it. Um, then of course behind Vector Prime is the almighty Primus himself, battling none other than this big boy. Just as a side note, it is insane that, like, of the two of them, I got Primus first, and I thought he was absolutely enormous. Then this guy came along, and holy crap, he's enormous. Um, in fact, here was the funny thing. Um, after I measured out these new units, I was scared that Unicron wasn't going to fit, um, and he nearly didn't for a while, until I finally realised, hey, he has knees. Use them. And honestly, it has worked out even better than I could have imagined, because now he looks like he's in, a, in an ultra-aggressive pose with a clenched fist, and that just works out even better for me. So I'm just really pleased with that collection thus far, and eventually I'm just going to have um, a lot of characters representing the 13 Primes just make up the middle there. Might even get, um, not sure which figure I'll get for it yet, but I'll definitely have a Megatronus up along here somewhere, just not sure which figure, but it'll definitely be closer to Unicron anyway. So starting off with my Autobot collection, now occupying the very top shelf is my Lost Light collection. This is definitely the smallest of, well, whenever I say smallest, I mean, um, it's definitely one that has grown a lot in the last year. <sighs> Heck, in the last year alone, how many editions have there been? There's been Drift, Alpha Bravo, um, Nautica, uh, Brainstorm, and Ultra Magnus. Um, actually, a cool thing is that Ultra Magnus was one of the figures I picked up at TF Nation last year. So, really, really pleased with that. Uh, so yeah, just really, really pleased with um, this collection thus far. Again, all of just want to make it clear that all of these figures um, are still um, I'm still figuring out where to put certain characters and figures. So odds are, all of this is going to be rearranged at some point. Um, just wanted to really get a sense of what it would look like initially, but just really, really pleased with the Lost Light crew at the moment. Down below that is my Wreckers collection, and this is definitely one that I'm, this is definitely the collection I'm most proud of, because, you know, a lot of time and resources has gone into, you know, figuring out what characters I want in here, what figures I want to represent them. Um, so, for instance, uh, Fall Cybertron Roadbuster. I know that the Swindle Mold isn't great, but I just, I just absolutely love Roadbuster's head for this figure. Um, which definitely made it one of the best contenders for it. Um, then along the back is Prime First Edition Bulkhead, uh, Beast Hunter's Wheeljack as a temporary stand-in, uh, Generations Sandstorm, uh, R.I.D. Combiner Force Windblade, who I plan to customize into Maxima from Combiner Wars, um, simply because I think that, you know, as an original character she was wasted, in Combiner Wars, and it would be really cool to just have her be part of the Wreckers, just as part of her new character. Also, I don't think Machinima is going to be using the, her anytime soon, so that's good to know. Um, the fearless leader of the Wreckers himself, Springer. Um, tucked away in there, Top Spin and Twin Twist, who look absolutely awesome, just fist bump each other. Uh, Cybertron Defense Force Hotshot, who I've renamed Hellfire. Simply because I maintain that um, he is one of the heaviest, or one of the heaviest armed um, <laughs> deluxes Hasbro's ever made. Uh, the Last Night Hound. Also, um, sorry, the background image is a little dark at the moment. I'm still trying to figure out specific colors for this thing. Um, but yeah, um, Last Night Hound, Generations Cup with the third party head, which I got at um, a toy. Um, fair last year, so just really loving the third party head. And then of course in the very front is Prime Hotshot. And now of course the plan was always to get Cybertron Defense Hotshot and rename him. Um, 
but I just really wanted to include Prime Hotshot in this collection, simply because I just wanted him um, to be kind of like the rookie of the team. Plus, I kind of felt like a cool idea to have um, a character with potential flamethrowers. I don't know, just felt like a really cool idea. So that is what the Wreckers look like. The camera would focus, there we go. Down below that is my sort of just miscellaneous Autobot collection. I'm going to move on to the next shelf below that and I'll explain why. But um, this is just sort of a random mishmash of different figures. Again, all of this is just relatively temporary until I figure out where I want to put other figures. But um, in the meantime, I uh, have Power of the Primes, Alita 1, uh, Inferno, Generations Chromia, Landmine, uh, First Movie, Longarm, Ratchet, uh, Generations RC, uh, Power of the Primes, Moonraiser. Again, sorry for the darkness here, but um, actually... No, no, never mind. Sorry about that. Um, Je uh, Titans Return Hardhead, Siege Cog, um, and then Dark at the Moon, Sideswipe, who, I'm who, I've re who I've basically used as my stand-in blue streak, uh, simply for the time being, anyway. So that's what that shelf looks like, and then we have this one. I'm going to have to step back for this. So this is sort of what um, I'm calling my Autobot Central Command. So this basically has all the Autobots who I would consider to be in the high-ranking um, positions or hierarchy of the Autobots. So of course, like obviously the main man himself, Optimus Prime, Ultra Magnus, Jazz, um, then more other figures. Got Windblade. Uh, here we got Blue or Smokescreen, Blur, uh, Mirage. Uh, Prime RC, who I simply wanted to throw in here because she was my first ever RC figure. So I thought, why not? Might as well keep her around um, in the collection. Uh, first edition Cliff Jumper, Battle Blade Bumblebee, uh, Hunt for the Slipcons, Iron Hide, and Revenge of the Fallen Jolt. If I can get past Magnus. There we go. So that's sort of what my Autobot Central Command looks like. Down below that. Or my combiners, and I'm gonna have to move back further for this one. Sorry for the noise. Um, this is this is something that I didn't actually think I would get. Um, I, I just really love um, the fact that I have my combiners on full independent display. Um, previously, because they shared um, a shelf with Omega Supreme, and being the bigger of the of all the figures, kind of took away from just how cool they are. Just on its own, um, the Superion is definitely the coolest of the figures, of the combiners that I have, um, at least in the Autobot faction. Um, Victorion is really cool, except for the annoying fact that I can't seem to get her to stand just on her own, to the point that she's very gently resting up against the side of the unit here. So that's really the only reason she's standing upright, you know, and the massive sword to counterbalance. So yeah, hoping to potentially find an upgrade kit for somewhere. I'm pretty sure there's one out there somewhere, just haven't found it yet. In fact, speaking of Omega Supreme, actually, should have thought of this from the get-go. There we go. So I'm just gonna have to improvise with this. The me, the biggest bought in the collection. This figure is colossal. Um, well, actually, I take that back. Unicron is the biggest. Um, but aside from Primus, Un Omega Supreme is definitely the biggest Autobot I've ever had. Um, still is one of the best um, and biggest figures I've ever got. Um, the only unfortunate thing is that one of the legs, specifically the left leg, something about that just seemed to give up on me, and it hasn't ever seem to want to lock into Plius ever since, but I don't really take um, Supreme out all that much, so I'm not really worried about it. Um, and you can kind of see the one thing I didn't want, um, the exposed plugs along the back. And I'm not too worried about those for the time being, but I'm sure I'll figure out a way to cover that up, at least at some point. And then, Planet X Vulcan. Um, still one of the best figures I've ever got. Also, this figure happens to have the honor of being my first ever third-party figure. So, that's pretty cool. 
Um, and the plan is that um, I hope to one day track down all of the fall Cybertron Dinobots that Planet X have ever put out. So, and this will be the shelf that they live on. Um, because initially I was hoping to have an exclusive Dinobot shelf. Um, unfortunately that just really won't be the case, just given all the figures I have and how limited space I have on the Autobot side. So yeah, that's what the Autobot collection looks like for the time being. And then we have my Decepticon collection. And it's definitely safe to say that in comparison to the Autobots, I have far, far fewer Decepticons. Um, that, that definitely wasn't the intent though, I'll say that much. So starting off on the top shelf is really a brand new collection in of itself. And that is kind of where I plan to put any and all future beast formers I plan to get. Um, of course, taking center stage at the moment is my custom uh, Prime Predaking and Prime Darksteel just behind. Still two of the best figures from the entire Predacon line. Um, from Prime, in my opinion. Um, this is def this is one of the most complex customs I ever did at the time. Um, of course, that would all change whenever my friend Dreadwing2029 sent me his Predaking to customize form. Um, and I did, I did um, a really cool looking custom form. Um, and that is the inevitable plan is I actually have a second one of these Predaking figures lying about here somewhere that I'm going to customize pretty soon and I'm going to retire this one because as you can see some of the paint has um, if, if not faded away then I've just slapped a slob of paint on front just to basically cover it up. Unfortunately it's not too subtle plus the neck is getting really stiff and a lot of the rubbery bits are pretty much disintegrating at this point. Plus, I really wanted to do um, a more show accurate color scheme, much like what I did with um, Dreadwing's Predaking figure. So that's the plan for Predaking at least. But um, this shelf is where all the future Beast Formers are going to go. Um, potentially planning on tracking down Generations Waspinator and maybe another couple of Predacon figures from Prime. But for the time being, I'm just really looking forward to what a potential Predaca or Predacon army will look like. So on the shelf below that is much the same, very bar or very empty at the moment. Um, the plan is that on this shelf I'm gonna get um, a load more Viacons um, and just sort of build up a small uh, Viacon army. So as you can see, I have one Viacon figure at the moment. Um, going, I'm definitely going to expand that out to potentially get another two or three. Uh, then I'm going to get um, some of the Jet Viacon figures. And finally, um, the brand new Siege Brunt or Brute figure. I forget how to pronounce it. Um, definitely going to get a couple of those figures and just basically build it up. So that way I have three separate Viacons. I'll have simple ones that'll be the ground units, the Jets, obviously as air, air reinforcements. And then the Brutes, that'll basically be the heavy artillery. So yeah, that's kind of the rough plan for the Viacons. Then on this side, is, I have you know, I have uh, the Last Night Nitro Zeus, Dark of the Moon Crankius, and who is that? Revenge uh, Reveal the Shield Chop Shop or Buzzsaw? I I forget what you call this guy. Um, but I just thought they looked like really crazy characters and potentially the last people or the last characters you'd want to put in charge of an army. They'd be put in charge of a Viacon army. So I thought, why not? They're kind of like a crazy group. So who knows what they're capable of. Maybe they have the highest kill kinds of the Decepticon army. You never know. So that's what that shelf looks like for the time being. And moving down below is much like the miscellaneous Autobots I spoke of. This is kind of my miscellaneous Decepticon shelf. Um, consist consisting of... Vent of the Fallen Thrust, uh, Prime Dead End, who I've renamed Toxitron. Also, big. Th also, I want to thank Crosshairs Productions for no other reason other than he gave me the great idea of naming this, or he inspired the in the name. He inspired the rename of this guy, so I want to give a big thanks to that. Uh, Titans Return Oct Octone, 
uh, who was there? Titans Return, Trigger Happy, Dark of the Moon, Megatron, and Power of the Primes. Uh, I forget what you call this guy. Then in the very front, taking center display, is Revenge of the Fallen Bludgeon and Takara Legends Deadlock. Deadlock is. Deadlock's, or Deadlock is actually one of the latest additions to the collection. A figure I never thought I'd get, but just looks so, so good here. Um, definitely, and I definitely wanted a student and master situation, so I definitely think that worked out fantastic. So yeah, really pleased with that. And then down below is really where um, the bulk of the Decepticon collection is at the moment. Much like the Autobot shelf, this is the Decepticon Central Command. So this is basically populated by figures that I really, really liked, and or, um, or just simply figures that um, would make up the Decepticon hierarchy. So going left to right is Scourge, Cyclonus, Siege Megatron, who is one of the best figures from the Siege line thus far. If you don't agree on that, I will fight you. Just kidding. Um, first edition Starscream, War for Cybertron Soundwave, and Fall of Cybertron Shockwave. Also, I'm um, currently trying to figure out um, if there are any minions or minicons, you know, like Ravage, Laserbeak, Rumble, and Frenzy, that um, would scale well with Soundwave here. I um, haven't found any thus far, but I'd really love to know if um, you have any recommendations. So please, any and all feedback is very welcome. Uh, looking then at the back shelf, if the camera would focus, there we go. Uh, I've got a couple of different figures, uh, Skywarp and Thundercracker. If I, can if I can eventually find a false Cybertron Starscream, I will finally have my first Seeker Trio. Uh, behind that is Generations Blitzwing and uh, Reveal the Shield Lugnut. So kind of a mini animated reunion there. Uh, in fact, actually speaking of that, we did um, Revenge of the Fallen Lo Lockdown right next to Studio Series Age of Extinction Lockdown. And finally, Prime Dreadwing, which you can barely see because it is super dark. Why? Um, so then right below that, similar to my Autobot shelf, these are where I keep my Decepticons. <clears throat> my Decepticon combiners, excuse me. Come on. There we go. And so this is where I have my Combiner Wars Minosaur and custom, still in progress, Galvatronus. Uh, both of whom um, I managed to get um, perfect effect perfect effect hands and feet for, um, and Minosaur just on its own looks so much better with the new upgrades. Um, potentially hoping on finding more upgrades for him, but no, I'll wait and see. And as for Galvatronus, um, the plan is to paint up a lot more of the figures to be potentially a custom sweep um, platoon, you never know. Um, trying to find a bigger sword form. Um, a couple of people recommended using Minosaur's sword, um, which is um, actually a really good idea, but I, d I didn't want to just simply have two figure, two big combiners with the exact same weapon, said the guy who has Galvatronus wielding the exact same gun as Superion, but um, I wanted to try and find a sword that would look really good for a massive combiner like this. So yeah, that's what that looks like for the time being. And the very last shelf um, is is technically empty. The only reason that um, any figures are in it is because I simply just put Bruticus in here to occupy space so it didn't look so empty. But speaking of which, uh, this is my fall of Cybertron Bruticus with the military titans upgrade, I think. Um, this is still one of my all-time favorite combiners. Um, I've always liked Minosaur, but as soon as the Fall Cybertron design came along, it just proved that this guy can look absolutely awesome. And menacing, but I don't want to reference anyone else. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, actually that, not only is that my entire Decepticon collection, that is the entire new display. So yeah, I'll just back up a little bit. And there we come on. 
Yeah, there we are. That looks absolutely fantastic. So yeah, that's what the new collection looks like. Um, I want to apologize for how dark some of the shelves looked. Um, I'm really hoping I can polish that up in the edit. If not, sorry about that. Um, the original plan had been to actually paint the inside of the units and the shelves themselves white, um, simply to help um, bounce the light about a little more. Um, I might still consider that option, but um, I think all I need to do is just readjust the lights a little bit. Um, but I am just so, so pleased with how the units turned out. Um, originally, I didn't really like the fact that they were, op that they were open at the back because um, I, like you saw at the bottom of the Omega Supreme shelf that you know the power sockets and everything there are exposed and I really didn't want that. But again, given the angle of the shelf and the fact that Omega will probably cover most of it, it doesn't really bother me at the moment. Um, I, I only just moved all this in this afternoon, so I'm, so I'll play it by ear and see how it goes. But I am just so, so pleased with how it all turned out. Um, the only thing I definitely will be changing about it, aside from you know minor rearrangements of specific figures and adding new ones as time goes by, is I'm, as, um, as you can see from the footage, there's a little split just down the middle of the units. Again, they're two separate ones, two separate units put side by side. So that obviously would lead to a gap like that. But the plan is that I'm going to drill a hole through each and bolt them together. One at the top, one at the bottom, and maybe one in the middle. But I'll play it, but again, I'll play that uh, by ear and see how it goes. But I, I just can't tell you how pleased I am with it. Like I'm looking at it right now and it just looks absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm just so, so pleased with how it all turned out. And it was the case that, um, like I said earlier on, the previous unit I had for a long, long time. And um, eventually, you know, with how the room was laid out, space wasn't being utilized the way it could be, you know, it potentially could be. I was sick of certain gaps appearing and the old unit had sort of run its course. Um, <laughs> it had been um, cut um, down to size um, about six years ago. And um, ever since then, um, all the shelves that I've got for it have bowed in the middle, only after what felt like a couple of weeks, um, which wasn't great. But um, now this new one, the shelves are now fully reinforced. They're shorter, so that works out even better. Um, again, I am just absolutely thrilled with how great they've turned out. So yeah, that is that's the new collection um, display for the time being, and I'm just so so pleased with it. Um, now um, I have now the entire reason I have these to begin with is not only to update the old display that I had, but because I'm updating a large amount of my room. Um, my desk is getting a complete remake over, remake over my desk. My desk is getting a lot of different upgrades. Um, I have um, one of the Alex drawers from Ikea sitting out in the garage. So the plan is that I'm gonna raise the desk a little bit, put the drawers underneath and just tidy it up here and there. The plan is also to put in a shelf um, just above the desk. So there, there's a lot of fine tuning that needs to go on and getting the massive new display in was one of the biggest priorities. So um, getting it sorted out was a must do. But now that it's in, that is a massive um, thing ticked off the list and I couldn't be more pleased with it. So yeah, um, just want to thank everyone for tuning in um, and I don't really know what to go out on with this video. Except for one thing, whenever, um, whenever I get the previously mentioned um, shelf above the desk installed, there's definitely one new collection that I'm going to start putting on it. And that is a shattered glass collection because dang it, I need a shattered glass collection. I already have drift. I have a couple, couple of customs in the works and we'll see where it goes from there. So yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in. I will see you all again soon. And I really don't know what else to say except shattered glass drift, I guess. Yeah, I'm just stalling for time there. Thanks everybody.